one. And of course, that low block, as you mentioned, Luke, is so tight and so compact. And one of the things I thought the U.S. really struggled with in that first half is how narrow their shape was. You're going to see Emily Fox, the right back, Sophia Smith, the right winger, all on that vertical central line, nothing on that right side. They weren't able to open the game up, and it's exactly as Ireland hoped, because as you see here again, Fox pinched in, the three forwards all within about 10 yards of each other, and really the entire 10 field players in a box of about 25 yards is what you saw a lot of this first half, and that congestion plays right into the hands of Ireland. Again, one more example of this, the U.S., when they win possession, they've got to take on a big shape. they got to get wider. And instead, again, you see the three forwards all central and most of the play trying to come up the middle. What they did in the second half much better is you see Lindsey Horan on one sideline and then that arrow points you can't even see to Trinity Rodman. She's so off the screen. Her whip, which creates the gap, which opens up that back five. And then, of course, you want to be finishing in that position. But the second half was much better for the U.S. when they found that width. And Alyssa Thompson tonight making her first start, a player that Vlatko Andonovsky feels has the ability to break down low blocks and compact defenses. He feels her skill set is perfect for the match that his side will face tonight. 100 days from now, the World Cup will kick off in Australia and New Zealand. And tonight, in one of the most storied cities in U.S. soccer history, it's the final game for the defending world champions before Vlatko Andonovsky names his roster. A last chance, maybe, for some players to secure a spot in a squad that is looking to create history by winning the World Cup three times in a row. The United States are perfect in 2023. They've played six, they've won six, they've scored 16 goals and conceded just one. And now in the blue, they kick off here in St. Louis against Ireland. Will they be able to cause more problems than they did for the Irish in Austin? Although having said that, Vlatko Andonovsky was pretty pleased with the way that he felt his side worked out the problems, worked through the issues, and in the end were able to win by two goals to nil. Yeah, and he did talk about the evolution of that game and finding the space and playing wider and opening up that game a bit. But this is a chance with, of course, six changes to the lineup, but another chance to show that they're going to keep the game evolving. Stepping in there is Louise Quinn to play the ball up towards halfway and Kira Caruso once again playing that lone striker role which a very power was pleased with on Saturday in Austin. Felt Caruso did a good job and now picked out by the ball through from Katie McCabe. Support here from Denise O'Sullivan into the path of Katie McCabe as Ireland start on the front foot once again just as they did in Austin and that shot over the bar. And, you, and there's something to be said Luke for Vera Powell's approach to all of this, the Irish coach saying, look, we we could make changes, we could look at other players, but why would I do that when I'm playing the number one team in the nation? I'm going to go after them. We're going to try and get something out of this game. It's not a development game for us. And you're seeing it here in these first five, that Ireland again coming out similar to that first game. Definitely not on their heels. I love the quote from Vera Powell at the press conference yesterday. Why would we give away a second game? for the chance to develop. We learn from Saturday, we implement what we need to do to improve. Right now though, it's a corner inside the first two minutes for the United States. They've won all 14 meetings all time against Ireland with a combined score of 50 to one. And the US scoring multiple goals in 13 of those 14 meetings. Courtney Brosnan once again in goal. And Sophia Smith will take the corner from the far side. Smith's ball in towards Becky Sauerbrunn who gets the head towards goal. It's off the bar. So close to the magical moment as Becky Sauerbrunn in her hometown looks for her first international goal. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know we're not supposed to be celebrating in the in the press box, but I think I might have done a backflip over that one. <laughs> I mean, Becky Sauerbrunn has not scored a goal in 215 caps, and so the joke is, what is the celebration when you score in St. Louis and on their first corner kick? She was free. Oh, 
Brosnan gets a little touch of this coming off. Oh, my goodness. And you see the smile on her face. It almost says it's never going to happen, is it? <laughs> Don't say never. It's always possible, Luke. Well, you did say to Vlako Andonovsky yesterday that you'll be very upset if she isn't taking the penalty if one comes her way today. Yeah, I said if you're not giving Becky Sauerbrunn that penalty in that game, we're not talking anymore. <laughs> he laughed. He's like, she doesn't want it. She puts herself 11th on the depth chart. <laughs> She'll become 38 in June, just ahead of the World Cup, the four-time NWSL Defender of the Year, who will be heading to her fourth World Cup. This ball played over the top, and Alex Morgan trying to get on it, and Courtney Brosnan comes out to get there. Goalkeepers at either end of the pitch tonight, Brosnan and Casey Murphy, who is in for Alyssa Nair, who grew up together in New Jersey, played for the same club, Players Development Academy in their early teens. The coach had to split the time between the two of them because they were both so good. And actually, Courtney Brosden saying that she's where she is today. A lot of the, the reason is because of Casey Murphy and the fact that she was being pushed at that early age yeah. by such an elite goalkeeper. It's such a fantastic story. Brosnan, now the starter at Everton, and really instrumental in getting Ireland to their first ever World Cup by her performances and goal. Saves the PK in the playoff game against Scotland early on in the game, keeps them in the game. I mean, she's just had a tremendous run and really getting looks at 27 years old in that in that number one spot. Picked up on the far side there by Alyssa Thompson. Brosnan's ball out across the back. Did train with the US under 23s in the past, Courtney Brosnan. Sophia Smith tried to turn, quickly closed down there by Rusha Littlejohn. And this is Samarisa Shiva, who plays in NWSL with Washington. Relatively new Irish international. And the pain coming forward down the right side, up against Alyssa Thompson and Kelly O'Hara, who is back in the team today, sliding in to put it out for a corner on that left side. O'Hara making her first appearance since last July in the W Championship group game against Mexico. And first start on that left back position. Usually you see Kelly on the right. Her first start in the left back position since 2018 as well. Good early test for Kelly O'Hara coming back from an extended injury that was frustrating and finally back playing, which is great to see. Katie McCabe is going across to take this one for Ireland, who did actually cause some problems from a couple of set pieces in the first half in Austin. That defeat in Texas saw an end to Ireland's nine-game unbeaten run. Katie McCabe in towards the front post. It was glanced away there by Lindsay Horan. forward by Megan Connolly who is actually playing at the back today having been in the midfield at the weekend and Murphy will get this ball long downfield challenge coming in from Sofia Huerta six changes in total today for the US with Murphy Huerta 